You might be underutilizing cursor. It genuinely has unlimited power. Like how many of you can say that you can control your Spotify through cursor? because I can and loads more. Cursor has been awesome at speeding up my workflows and by the end of this video, you'll be a productivity master with it and you'll be able to use it to control basically anything from your browser to Docker, to databases, to ClickHouse, to even a Minecraft character for some reason. We'll start out with the easy stuff, what I would call a five out of 10 on the productivity scale and we'll work our way up to a 10 out of 10. You know what else is productive? Subscribing. The first tip is to make sure you have your rules set up in a way that you like. Now you may have seen the .cursor rules file before, but did you know this is actually being deprecated and there's a way better way to do things now? If you haven't seen rules before, it's like a system prompt. It's custom instructions that guide the AI, tailoring its behavior to suit you. In your settings, head over to general and you'll find a section titled rules for AI. Now rules for AI is global. It's carried over to every project that you do with cursor. This is where you want to specify how the AI behaves in a general manner. So you can see in my example, I actually found this on Twitter. I'll leave it linked below. I say, do not give me high level stuff. If I ask for a fix or explanation, I want actual code. I don't want any of this. Here's how you can blah, blah, blah. I say, be casual, treat me as an expert, be accurate and thorough. And then other things like no need to disclose you're an AI. I think I'm smart enough to work that one out. Essentially what I'm saying in my rules for AI here is shut up a bit AI, just show me the actual code and let me get on with my job. I don't need any of this just wall of text that you sometimes get. So it's really nice to be able to customize the AI's behavior in this more general way. But something even more powerful than the rules for AI is the project rules. I'd actually rate these an eight out of 10 on the productivity scale. All you have to do in your cursor settings is scroll past the rules for AI section that we just set up and you'll find a section called project rules. Now these are project specific rules that help the AI understand your code base. This is the replacement for that dot cursor rules file that you may have used previously, but it's way more powerful. If we create a new rule, I'll call this one code, format, and then SQL. You can see that we get a new editor pop-up, which gives us a chance to enter a description, glob, and then the actual rule content. Filling it with an example, you can see that it's in markdown format. Now I've given it tons of rules on how it can use Postgres in my code base. Things like naming conventions, tables, columns, as well as a load of code examples. I'll actually show you a place where you can find tons of these rules, as well as something really cool that Superbase did in a bit, but let's see why these files are magic. That comes down to the description and the globs. The description is actually how you tell the AI when it should use this file. So for my example, it should use this pretty much whenever I ask it about Postgres. It's going to load in this rule automatically now. But if you want to be more specific than that, we can use globs. Globs are going to load in this rule whenever a file that the AI is working with matches the patterns that I provide here. So whenever I have a .sql file and I'm telling the AI to do something with it, it will load in this rule set. What's great about this is you can have tons of these highly detailed rules targeting specific parts of your code base. Say I had a mono repo, for example, and my front end and back end are in completely different languages. Well, now I can set up the glob to match when I'm in my front end or back end folder, and it will automatically load in the correct rules. It's way better than that cursor rules file, which tried to do everything at once, which could often end up confusing the AI. Once you've added a few of these, they're super easy to share with your team and save as well, as it actually goes ahead and creates a folder within your project. So we have the .cursor folder and then a rules folder. And in there, you can see all of my rules in that .mdc format, which is marked down with this extra description and globs. So now all I need to do is go ahead and commit this to Git and everyone on my team can start using the rules. If you want a great place to find examples of rules, you can head over to cursor.directory. As you can see, you can filter by your language and then you can come in here and just copy and paste the rule that you want. Something really cool though is what Superbase did. They actually uploaded a load of example prompts to their GitHub repo. So you can come in here and find specific rules on how you work with Postgres and Superbase, and you can go ahead and add these to your project rules. And it comes with all of the globs and everything that you'd need already filled out for you. These were actually what I was using earlier. This is super handy. And honestly, I'd love to see tons of companies follow that lead. Another quick tip similar to rules though is notepads. These serve as a collection of thoughts, rules, and documentation. Personally, I find it great for boilerplate code or prompts that I end up using a lot. So in this example here, if you go down to notepads, you can click add new notepad. In my notepad titled new page, I just say add a new page to the app and use at index.tsx as a reference. You can actually go ahead and reference files from within your notepads. Then all I need to do in my composer is I can simply say at and then go to notepads and then new page. And I could just say, call it about, for example, and hit enter. Now it's going to load in that notepad for me. So it doesn't do it automatically. You do have to manually reference it, but it will go ahead and create the code based on anything that I've put in this notepad. So as I said, I personally find it great for not having to type out the same prompt over and over. I can go ahead and just define it in a notepad and then call that later. Now for a nine out of 10 on the productivity scale, you know you can use web and custom documentation within Cursor, right? 
In the chat, all we need to do is type at web, and then we can go ahead and type in our search query or paste in a URL. For example, what if I say latest version of Tailwind and see what that comes up with as Tailwind v4 was just released. There you go, it's crawled the web and it's found out that the latest version of Tailwind is actually Tailwind v4, and it's gone in and read these pages as well and told me how to upgrade. But you can actually use a load of pre-indexed documentation from within Cursor. All you need to do is type in at docs and you'll find a long list of that officially indexed documentation. For example, we can find things in here like Next.js. We could also find things like Tailwind. Loads of things have been indexed by them. But what if something you want hasn't been indexed by them yet? We well, can go down and click add new doc. Then you can just paste in a link to the documentation that you want to be indexed and you can hit enter. For example, I'm going to index the better stack documentation. If I click confirm here, it will take you to the settings and it will tell you the result of when it's completed its indexing. So now that it's completed indexing, I should be able to reference the better stack documentation from within my composer. So there you go, I can do at better stack here and it even shows you a long list of all of the things that they've indexed and crawled based on that single URL that I provided with. So if I give this a go now and say list monitors, for example, and hit enter, it should now be able to pick up the latest information based on the documentation that I provided. So there you go, it's given me the correct examples. And if you scroll up to the top, it even gives you its sources. This is so simple yet effective, and it really helps in getting you up to date code within Cursor. Let's finish up with the 10 out of 10 feature that I think most people completely miss. That is Model Context Protocol. The Model Context Protocol is actually an open protocol that allows you to provide custom tools to agentic LLMs. And lucky for us, Cursor is one of them. It's actually a standard that was created by Anthropic, so everything I'm about to show you works in other agentic apps like the Claude desktop app. The first step is finding an MCP server that you actually want to use, or you could even develop your own. I found an awesome directory here that lists out tons of MCP servers. You can see there's tons of interesting examples, like one to interact with the Reddit API, to interact with DeepSeek agents, to take screenshots from Safari, tons of different examples in here interacting with Perplexity. There's even official ones too, where companies have provided their own to interact with their services. Things like Composio in here, Tavili, Brev, Axiom, Llama Cloud, Postgres, Upstash, loads of examples you can find online. There is tons to choose from. For my example, I'm gonna choose something a bit more useful than my Spotify demo, and that is a Docker MCP server. So with this, the agent will be able to go off, create Docker containers, look into the logs, stop them, run Docker Compose, tons of different things without it having to run a command in my terminal. So let's take a look at the setup instructions. Now it's gonna be different for each MCP server, but generally they follow the same pattern, and we're looking for a command that we can run within cursor, and I'll show you where in a bit. If I scroll down here, we have a quick start. You can see the command is UVX with the argument docker-mcp. Now, quite a lot of them follow this pattern. They use UV as a Python package manager and UVX to go ahead and actually run the Python code without installing all of it on your system. The other pattern they follow is some of them use an MPX command instead. It seems like this one has both, but I'm gonna be using the UVX command. In cursor then, head over to cursor settings and then features, scroll all the way down, it's quite a hidden feature, to MCP servers, and you see I already have that Spotify example that I showed you in the intro. This one is actually just running a UV command for code that I have on my system, as I actually made my own modifications to it. All we need to do is click add new MCP server, give it a name, choose the type. Now, if you're not clear on this, go ahead and check the documentation for the MCP server that you're using. Our one was using the type of command. Then we need to put in the command that we want to run. For me, that was simply UVX, and then it was docker-mcp, and I can go ahead and click add. This may be where you put your mpx command as well. If I click add now, you see we get a nice green icon, and it tells us the tools that we can now use, so it's picked them up. So we can create a container, we can deploy a compose, and we can get the logs and list our containers now, all from the composer. Let's try out our new tool then. All you need to make sure of in Composer is that you're in the agent mode. And if I say something like create a hello world Docker container, this should run off and call our tool now. As you can see, it's calling the MCP tool create container. And you actually see the arguments it's calling it with as well. So it's looking for the image hello world and it will give it a name of hello world test. Then we can go ahead and click run tool here. And you can see it's created the container and it's even going ahead and checking the logs so we can see the output. And I can go ahead and expand this and see the logs that we got out of that tool right from within the agent mode here. And that means it's added to the context as well. So if there's any issues, it should pick it up automatically. And I can actually start to debug within cursor from my Docker logs. This is what I mean when I say it has unlimited power since there's so many MCP tools out there. 
Now, one annoyance you might run into is clicking run tool all of the time. In the cursor settings though, you can actually enable a YOLO mode. Obviously, this is a little bit more unsafe as it allows composers to go ahead and run tools without asking for confirmation, even things like executing commands. But if you go ahead and enable it, you do get a couple of cool options, like you can give it a description of which commands should be executed automatically and let the AI work out whether it's allowed to, or you can actually just give it a command allow list and deny list. So if you're really trusting of AI, that can save you a bit of time. There we go. Hopefully you learned something new about Cursor today. Do you have any of your own tips? Let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know if you knew about MCP servers. While you're down there, go ahead and subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.